Hello, I'm Neil Nunes with the BBC News. Leaders of the G7 group of advanced economies are starting their summit today in the Japanese city of Hiroshima, a powerful symbol of the impact of war. The meeting is expected to focus on Russia's invasion of Ukraine and on preventing conflict with China. Nick Marsh is in Hiroshima. From the G7 leaders' point of view, the question now is how to hurt Russia economically and therefore militarily. In terms of what G7 leaders can do, well, we're expected to hear about tightening sanctions, maybe closing loopholes involving third countries that are helping Russia evade those sanctions. But an all-out trade ban, which is what Washington has been trying to push, that's unlikely to be agreed to. Disney has scrapped a plan to invest nearly $1 billion to build a new corporate campus in Florida. The plan would have seen about 2,000 employees relocate to the state. It comes amid an escalating feud between the entertainment giant and the state's Republican governor, Ron DeSantis. But Lee Cockrell, a former executive vice president of the Walt Disney Resort in Orlando, says it's a pure business decision. Maybe it is also a cost issue right now. Uh, the company's trying to lower capital expenditures right, right now to get the uh, profit line up because uh, that was one of the commitments to reduce costs by $5 billion. So they're doing that with layoffs, and I'm sure this may be part of that. We're not going to co- stop investing in Florida because of a governor who he'll be here for two or three more years, maybe at the most. The U.S. Supreme Court has handed social media companies a significant victory by protecting online platforms from two lawsuits that could have had big implications for Internet regulation. The twin decisions in cases involving Twitter and Google preserve social media companies' ability to avoid lawsuits stemming from terrorism-related content on their platforms. A group of TikTok users have sued Montana after it became the first U.S. state to ban the Chinese-owned video sharing app from operating there. The five users say the legislation violates the constitutional right to freedom of speech. The law prohibits app stores from offering TikTok to users in the state. Here's David Wellis. Montana's move could pave the way to broader measures, I think, to ban the app on national security grounds here. The problem, of course, is how to go about implementing a ban of that kind. And cybersecurity experts are saying it's virtually impossible for companies such as Apple and Google to ensure the app isn't being downloaded, given the variety of ways that exist for people to get round the content restrictions. This is the World News from the BBC. The Pentagon says it's overestimated the cost of ammunition, missiles and other military equipment it sent to Ukraine by about $3 billion. The mistake may result in the U.S. government being able to send more weapons to Ukraine without asking Congress for extra funds. A study by New York University has found half of online gamers have encountered extremist statements in online multiplayer games. The research surveyed more than a 1,000 people from the world's five major gaming markets, the US, Britain, France, Germany and South Korea. Jason Lee has their support. The report's author said extremist groups were exploiting the structures and communication features of online gaming spaces to disseminate radical ideologies, normalize hostile behavior and indoctrinate users. Virtual gaming communities were found to be particularly vulnerable to extremism due to their relative lax moderation and little public pressure on removing harmful content. Around the fifth of minors who participated in the study said they had seen statements spreading white supremacy, ethnic cleansing and misogyny. The study found young people to be particularly susceptible to extremism. Most of the judges on Brazil's Supreme Court have voted to convict the former president, Fernando Collegimelu, on corruption and money laundering charges. Mr. Collegimelu, who was accused of influence peddling and subsequently impeached in 1992, was accused of receiving around $6 million in bribes from a subsidiary of the state-run oil company Petrobras. An Australian doctor who was held captive in West Africa for more than seven years has been released. Dr. Kenneth Elliott, who is 88, is said to be safe and well. He and his wife were seized near the border between Burkina Faso and Mali, where they operated a clinic for more than 40 years. She was released after three weeks. BBC World News.